Oh, and welcome back to another Polls and Pickups. This is kind of, this was originally all going to be one giant Polls and Pickups. Um, this was from, what was it? this is last week's, I think, because I, I, if, I div- if I did this correctly, I divided it where the Polls and Pickups a few days ago was two weeks ago and picks up Pickups and last week's Pickups is this Polls and Pickups. <laughs> And then in a few days, the next polls and pickups is going to be this week's polls and pickups. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So this is last week, I'm pretty sure. Uh, start, so starting off, we got Sensational Wonder Woman. And this is a number one issue. So that was the one of the big reasons as to why I wanted to hop on. This actually came out a few months prior to this release, which I said was, yeah, like last week, I think it was. Um, this actually released, like, was it December, maybe January, something like that? It was one of the digital first issues. And... Um, that's basically um, uh, uh, one of DC's kind of new initiatives to push their um, digital DC is it DC Universe DC Universe app is to have certain um, of their publications come out um, or periodicals or whatever come out um, oh, digital first and then sometimes like a month later or um, a- after some time passes then it'll come out um, physically. So, you know, take that as you will. But anyways, uh, I was not a fan of this. It, it was it was really a big, giant disappointment. Starting off with the art, it was it was way too cartoony. And, I mean, you can see it right now. If you like it, you like it. If you like it, if you don't like it, you know, it's easy to tell right here. But personally, um, right off the bat, I just don't like the art. It's too cartoony, and it's fine. It seems like it would work if it was something else, right? I was thinking about this. Uh, um, th- th- I was trying to like articulate what my problem is with it, and it's not necessarily that the art style is bad in and of itself. It's that I don't really think it fits Wonder Woman or what I wanted to see. It, it just kind of was a shock, and even then, I don't know if I could really get used to it because it's it, it seems like it's um, there's a lot of there's a lack of detail and really the the style is very kind of overemphasized, thick outlined um, and colorful um, scenes and that seems like that would work for something that is um, based off of a cartoon property like I was thinking maybe um, I, I kind of inherited or have a lot of um, comics that my mother used to read that were um, Scooby Doo and um, uh, Looney Tunes and things of that nature. So I, I think it would fit something like that. But with Wonder Woman, you know, this this looks nothing like what I'd expect. Um, it, it seems more like caricatures. And uh, maybe for a um, younger audience, maybe this would work, but it's not. Um, as you can see right here, uh, the whole thing... <laughs> The next part that I have an issue with is the plot. And um, if this was going to be, if this was meant for kids, which it's what, whatever, 13 and up, so kind of, but it's not. Um, the art style makes you think it would be for like, you know, um, middle school, less younger than that, like like young girls, for example. But the story involves um, like spouse abuse. <laughs> so that doesn't really fit very well. Um, it's just... Man, and and but for an older audience, it doesn't really work either because it's even though it's about spouse abuse, it's written so. So I'll just flat out say it: it's written so badly and cheesily. It's um, don't you dare defy me! You're my wife. Uh, was it not? No, I'm not. I remember who I am. It's very um, preachy, and I get that they're trying to. Uh, the story is that uh, Wonder Woman, uh, after the events of uh, Death Metal, um, the state that she was put in, um, she's now basically trapped inside of her own mind, as far as I know. And I guess this is memories of some kind, or is it like a distortion? Like, is is the husband supposed to like represent, you know, I don't know, self doubt or something like that? And that's the thing, because here he turns into a <laughs> a like blob creature of some kind i don't know it's it's badly executed it's it's really brief that's the, that's like the one pro to it is it's quite brief and i guess these pages don't look that bad because they're not focusing too much on um there's more complexity in her uh, costume uh, that she transforms into and the backgrounds aren't as there's not as much going on so it's easier on the eyes because um there's not as much to mess up i guess i should say but if anything that's more of an insult than a compliment it just it was not good the writing was cheesy it was corny but it wasn't corny enough to be funny it just kind of came off as i don't know like a social justice warrior that doesn't know how to write 
decide, was somehow given the ability to write a Wonder Woman comic. It's it's just bad. I mean, you can you can have spouse abuse in a Wonder Woman story. You can have um, trapped inside of her own mind, stuck in an like a uh, past time, like decades ago. That's a cool idea, right there. Um, and Hot Girl trying to um, fight off uh, some villain that I don't even remember the name of and don't care to remember because it's. I, I enjoyed this so so little. Um, and trying to get her out of whatever state that she's in and so forth. It, it's not bad. All the components, if you were to take out all the components of this and put them separately, they all work to an extent, but it's together. It's how that things were executed. The art style would work in a, a YA book or a, um, you know, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the certain plot elements, like I said, would work if they were executed correctly, but it's all together. It just comes off as very just very badly done like it's like it's someone that has a good idea underneath it all but just doesn't know how to execute it at all and just shouldn't be behind a property like this and yeah it's just kind of sad um but what's funny is that speaking of comicsology like i did in the last video um uh, the why after this i was so disappointed in this i was thinking actually i think i want to read something wonder woman wise that actually is good so i was like what what should i read what should i read so i'm looking on comicsology and the first issue of not sensational wonder woman but the first issue of sensation comics which i think don't don't quote me on this somebody in the comments will tell me I'm, or someone on reddit or somewhere where i post this will tell me i'm wrong if i'm wrong but i thought um, if not, it's one of the very early Wonder Woman series. But if I'm correct, I thought it was the first ongoing Wonder Woman series, uh, Sensation Comics. And the first issue is free on Comixology. So that was – and I read that. That was a lot of fun. So check that out. And um, – uh, and each issue after that, it's like oftentimes they come in packs of two, I think. Um, they're only like 80 cents or 99 cents each, something like that. Um, so it's it's quite good. Um, and those are enjoyable. Um, you know, they're, they're not perfect. Uh, if you're not a fan of Golden Age comics, you won't like them. But if you are or if you haven't tried Golden Age comics or just want to try something Wonder Woman for real cheap, I mean, that's a good option. There's also a ton of other things that are on um, – Hey, Wonder Woman. Um, <laughs> there are quite a few other things available through Comixology, um, some of which through the subscription once again. And as I talked about in the last video, you, oh, I'm, I'm doing a free trial of that. You can get a free trial for a whole month and then just cancel it. So you got a, a month worth of free comics to try out. Um, do that. D don't don't waste your money on, on Sensational Wonder Woman. Uh, the cover sounded cool. The solicitation sounded cool. It's not worth it, though. Swamp Thing issue one of a 10 part series. This is a continuation of the Future State Swamp Thing series I showed off a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, a month ago. Well, well, yeah, a month ago when Future State was still going on. And um, I, I liked the series, but um, it, yeah, I, I liked the series. It, it was good. It had promise. Um, but what's weird is that uh, it's funny because I wouldn't be reading this if I was. <laughs> I wouldn't be reading this series if I hadn't have read Future State Swamp Thing. But Future State Swamp Thing also is basically the conclusion, it seemingly, to this. No, uh, I, I, seemingly. I'm not, I, I'm not super versed on Swamp Thing. I'm not, um, I, I haven't looked too much at the timeline. There's a Future State timeline floating around somewhere on the internet you could probably find. But as far as I know, it takes, it's the furthest in the DC timeline. It It takes place in like, like a thousand years later or something like that so at like end of time and um sure it's you could say well it's so far removed does it really spoil anything here kind of kind of not like you could you, it doesn't really it doesn't ruin anything and if anything like i said it helped me um push me to read this series but in a way i don't know in a way it's kind of sad to know that uh, it's sad to know that i the characters i'm seeing here i know their fates sure it's like a thousand years from now but I still know what's going to happen to him, so it's a little weird. Um, but anyways, uh, this how is this issue? This is good. Um, just like the Swamp Thing in the Future State series, I'm not super blown away by it, but there's a lot of promise here, and I'm really liking it. The question is, why do I like it? And first off, uh, you know, the first thing you always see is the art. So let's talk about the art. Uh, the art is good. I like it. It's interesting because it's not as um, it's. It's weird because it's not – there's a lot of similar colors being used, um, but it doesn't blend together. There's It's good shading. The shading kind of counteracts the use of very similar colors, and if anything, they both gel together really well. You may have a lot of greens in one area, but 
you have such, uh, such so many different tones and the way that the line work is, you're still able to tell differences and like, you know, people's skin, as you can see, and so forth, there's a lot of shading going on and it works well. It wouldn't work if it wasn't executed well, but it is executed well. And you got this beautiful splash screen right here. And uh, the art re really was good. Um, a step up from some of the other DC books um, I've been reading recently that have come out, you know, within these last few months as of this year. And yeah, uh, enjoyable. Uh, the story is weird, but in a good way. It uh, features this a man. He's um, on a he's on a plane and everything, and he's heading to a, a kind of a, he's a, starting a new chapter of his life, I should say, and is meeting up with a woman he knows and is staying at her house um, to get back onto his feet. I forget if he lost his job or what exactly happened to him, but um, the main thing that you want to know is that he is having these visions and nightmares of um, the green, which is basically, you could say, like the speed force, but for, um, instead of for the Flash, it's like the speed force for um, uh, the Swamp Thing universe. It's, the green is like the, as far as I know, I mean, uh, this is only my, only my third Swamp Thing issue I've read, but it seems as if it's some kind of like energy force, like like the force from Star Wars or something. It's like a life, the lifeblood of swamp creatures, so to speak. And I don't know if he has it within him or what, but he's, um, he's constantly being contacted and having these visions of that. Well, I guess I kind of know that it, he seemingly has it inside of him because I'll get to spoilers. So that spoilers, it's kind of hard to spoil a first issue because of anything, since it's just an introduction to a series, um, 10 part series here, you can't really, I don't know if you can really be spoiled by it, but uh, light spoilers, I guess I would say, going forward here. Um, and uh, this this with uh, power within him, uh, we'll see in his dream in just a second here, um, that he's actually able to manifest it and is able to basically become plants, become the swamp thing when he falls asleep and he's able to basically appear in different locations. And that's important to this scene because... We have these police there investigating a homicide in a uh, desert in um, uh, uh, so uh, Sonarian. Sonarin <laughs> can't uh, say names very well, and uh, basically they tell this uh, spooky ghost story about how there's this uh, creature, um, native creature there that um, kind of uh, urban legend, and that stalks the night and kills people, anybody that goes in his desert, his area of the desert. And um, while that's going on, we uh, get some more character development and learn a little bit more about our main man here, and. Uh, his relationship with, I'm pretty sure she's just a friend of his, um, learn more about her. And, but th then this is when we get to the whole dream sequence I talked about when he, when he falls asleep, he, he's talked, talked to by the green basically. And, um, he's able to then, and it, you know, tells you a little bit more about him, but then he's, what's cool is that, you know, as the, the urban legend creature starts to fight off the police, police officers that were investigating, um, the swamp thing, it knows that he needs to protect that area for whatever reason. And he basically manifests out of the cacti that are at that desert. And basically while he's asleep, spiritually becomes swamp thing all, you know, however far away that he's in like New York, I think it said. So this is some far away desert somewhere, but he's able to like spiritually control the swamp thing and fight off this, um, you know, whatever zombie urban legend kind of creature that lives there. So that's super cool. And I like that idea, right? Where he's able to kind of be in many places at, well, not once, but he's able to be all over without leaving at all. It's very, very interesting, and um, it's it's a lot spookier, you could say. It's not spooky, but it's uh, kind of has some more horror elements and vibes going on than you would then say the Future State series. But that kind of brings to mind: should you read the Future State series before reading this? Well, because it kind of spoils things, I wouldn't say so. I, I'd say, you, and you, you it kind of helps introduce you to certain elements of the Swamp Thing universe if you've never read a Swamp Thing comic, but it, especially if you've never read a Swamp Thing comic, you, don't, you really don't need to read Future State Swamp Thing before reading this. But if you're interested, um, or if, you, if you're interested in doing so, or if you have never read anything Swamp Thing related, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But uh, I guess go in kind of at, from what I told you, kind of go in with... Um, uh, 
go in with subdued expectations and realize that you also are kind of going to know what happens last. It is kind of, like I said, once again, uh, this new series is kind of removed far enough timeline wise that it doesn't affect things too much, but it was a little, it was, was kind of a bummer figuring that out that I basically read something that, um, you know, read the final conclusion to these characters, but nonetheless, uh, Batman 106, this is the first, uh, Batman issue that I'm, first ongoing Batman issue I'm reading currently, um, current Batman issue, uh, before, you know, I was reading the Future State books, and I was, I really wasn't a fan of those, um, uh, they started out with a lot of promise, but the execution just wasn't there, and things fizzled out quite quickly. And by the third issue, there was just so many annoyances, and the fact that the issue was eight dollars, you know, each issue was eight dollars a pop. That def definitely didn't help things at all. And as you can see right off the bat, the color here is quite good. I love the neons and such. I haven't actually read this yet, so I'll be telling you what I think of it in just a few days now for the next polls and pickups. Um, and, but it looks cool here. You got, um, some cool kind of camera work as you can see. And basically the plot, um, some without spoiling anything, cause I haven't even read it. So I don't know spoilers. Um, but the plot basically of this new story arc is that, uh, Batman has to team up with, I believe the scarecrow. Right, has to team up the Scarecrow in order to fight an even bigger threat. So it's you know Batman f teaming up with a villain in order to fight an even more powerful villain, and it seems as if there's. Yeah, I don't exactly know if there's still magistrate stuff going on because the magistrate stuff uh, in that happened in the future tape books that takes place a few years later, but um, there might still be seedlings of that. I don't exactly know. Don't quote me on that. I'll put something on screen right now to uh, confirm that for you. And yeah, that's basically it. I don't have much to say on that because I haven't read that. But what I have read, we're moving on. We're moving on to uh, Marvel stuff now. I had a lot of DC stuff. Um, but next up, we have Captain America, King in Black. This is a one shot. Um, you know, one and done. And uh, this issue wasn't bad at all. Um, it it you don't do you have to read uh, other King and Black tie-ins to know what's going on? No, not really. Do you need to <laughs> read Captain America's ongoing series to know what's going on? No, not really. So, but in a way, because it's only a one on one shot, it you know it really has a lot of weight on its shoulders, right? Back in the day when uh, comics had a lot more writing. And, um, you know, you had a lot more um, kind of narration and things describing what's going on and just tons more text. It, you were a able to get away with one shots more. Um, but even then, it, it's yeah. But nowadays, it's it's even more tough because uh, unless you want to really change your writing style and quite stand out quite a bit from everyone else, which is there's nothing wrong with that. But this definitely doesn't do that. And that's kind of the problem is that for being a one shot that sounds fine in theory but then when you realize it's written in the modern era when there when it's still using kind of the the modern technique of storytelling and that works when uh, when the story's uncompressed but when you have to compress the story down to one one comic and you're still going to be using the uncompressed kind of storytelling methods that modern comics use you kind of have this um I don't know, false dichotomy kind of um, dilemma that you start to face. And this definitely has that. And it's it's not bad, though, at all, though. I enjoyed it, I think, but it's don't go in expecting a ton. Uh, so, yeah. And the, the art, though, uh, once again, you, you can have a different opinion than me, but personally, I'm not a big fan of the art. The colors are kind of more subdued, and that would be fine if the detail made up for it or kind of complemented the color work. But it seems as if someone just kind of colored... It just kind of threw some colors in, and the art itself is um, more simplistic than I'd like, but if they were going to go with that, then it feels like they should have had other aspects complemented, like maybe the backgrounds could have been more detailed, or I don't know. It just doesn't seem to complement well. It just kind of seems off-putting to me. It's not cartoony. It's not super cartoony, but it's also nowhere near realistic. The color work isn't colorful, but it's not like black and white you know if it's i almost would have preferred if it was black and white and they just had like more line work going on or whatever it just doesn't work well together it just too conflicting in my mind and there's some weird kind of jank in terms of um facial elements and such um and so forth and the story is exactly as you'd expect what you're seeing is what you get captain america and um the winter soldier and uh bucky no 
yeah, yeah, Bucky, uh, Captain America, and um, the Falcon all have to fight off different Knoll monsters and things. And briefly, Captain America gets taken over. He, he was supposedly he was taken over in another one shot, or in another uh, King Black Tie-in. Sorry, in another King Black Tie-in, Captain America was supposedly taken over prior to this, so he was taken over again in this very briefly, and then he became good again. And he has to fight Knoll's onslaught, and you probably can guess how it concludes. Um, I, I guess I won't spoil it. Is there anything? <laughs> is there any spoilers? It wasn't bad at all, but I don't really have much to say on it. Um, just kind of kind of mediocre in the middle. I'd, I'd probably say it's a little above average, maybe, because there was some good a uh, action there, and um, the writing wasn't as good as I had hoped, but there was an aspect of the ending was really... Um, an aspect of the ending really kind of brought the whole thing up. I'm not going to spoil it, but a certain kind of scene, like the last page kind of brought things together nicely. Um, next up, we have Nonstop Spider-Man. This I was excited for. This was actually announced way before I, uh, it was like a year ago, year and a half ago. I think it was like a year ago or so. And of course, I didn't know about it because I wasn't into comics at the time. I talked about this in the past, but it was like November when I got back into comics. Um, but the second I heard about this, I was interested. A cool, really cool cover there. And uh, basically, the normal Spider-Man series is on. It's like 60-something issue. So I was looking, oh, what, what series in Sp uh, Spider-Man related isn't very far in? And there's like uh, Spider-Woman, I don't think is that far in. And um, Miles Morales, uh, it's just called Miles Morales, I forget. That one isn't that far in either. But I was kind of hesitant on hopping onto those. But once I heard nonstop Spider-Man and read the... Uh, solicitation. I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta try this. And I'm kind of disappointed, but it's not bad at all. I have it almost like X-Men Legends, which I covered in the last polls and pickups. Just click the card in the top right. And um, in, in a way, it's a lot like X-Men Legends in the sense that I enjoyed my time with it, but I more, the best part of it isn't what it delivered, but what it can promise and what it kind of means. Uh, the, my biggest flaw with this is the writing. It's very, I, I watched a video on somebody talking about it and um, I forget how they, I'm trying to think how they described it. They talked about how it was like, oh yeah, they, they described it as it being almost like you're reading, reading someone's like tweets. And yeah, I kind of agree. It's, there's some weird stuff and I'll, I'll once I flip forward some more, you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, it's very, very uh, cut. The dialogue's very cut up and choppy. Um, they, 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 nobody says full sentences anymore. Kids these days, they uh, <laughs> this whole giant kind of half splash screen, half not, um, is like that. It's uh, sorry, Kelly. It's V VM for you. Oh, we're all having a bad day. Ten stories because he's he's falling and I guess he's counting. Yeah, yeah, he's counting each story he falls down. Ten stories. Forget the clothes. Goodwill has more. Remember the debris. No one goes to the hospital over this. No one's innocent. Don't 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 boom. And then he goes goes through expensive cologne, expensive SUV. He's he's talking about what he's seeing and I get it, but it's like it's too fast, man. <laughs> I, I get, and that's the thing that's um, enjoyable about Spider Man in general. He's he's quippy and he's kind of um, he's this uh, juvenile and kind of. Um, he, he's a quick thinking juvenile that um, is immature in certain ways and will make uh, funny quips and kind of twist the words around on villains and such. But all at the same time, th this is like a step too far. I think it's it, it's fine to an extent, but it's just <laughs> I'm like grabbing my head with the other hand. I'm thinking, geez, it's like headache inducing at times because it just it, it's it's kind of nerve wracking because you're because you're reading through it. You're trying to re look at what's going on. You're trying to you know, understand what he's saying, and then he'll switch between different things at once. And, you know, I've, it's one thing to have a narrator be talking about something and having the character say a few things as well, and they kind of contrast a little bit. Or, um, you know, I've seen it where, I think it was Daredevil, Daredevil 26, where 
um, the like uh, Venom voice that's basically in Daredevil's head is talking, and uh, Daredevil reacts to it and responds, and it goes back and forth, and they're both talking about two different things, but they they like they're kind of responses to one another, and, and there's a cool thing about doing that where there's t- two conversations going on at the same time, but this is like fifty conversations going on at the same time because he's talking about what he's seeing, he's counting down the stories that he's falling, he's saying how many seconds it is until he hits the floor 30 right seconds no no no. he's just counting yeah he's counting the stories yeah he's counting the stories he's saying what he's seeing uh he's and then he's describing why he thinks whatever is happening why he's seeing what he's seeing um and that you know they uh, the car is expensive expensive cologne it must be a um you know these people must know what they're doing they must be some kind of trained organization and so forth and it's just a little too much um, and it chills out a little later, but then it also picks up some other kind of writing that I'll get to in a minute. But I want to talk about the art real quick because, um, it, of course, it's subjective, but I, I liked it for sure. Um, you can see it right here and see what you think of it. But um, the one thing that I thought was interesting was just the panel work as a whole. It's, you know, it's slanted and then it goes there. There was that spread a second ago where it like it hopped across and there was like it, the borders of what's a panel and what's not a panel are being pushed in this issue. And like certain panels like this are like sliding off the off the page almost it's cool and i like it that way it's a it was a little hard to follow the first like page or two but you i got used to it quickly and i I think it helps kind of add speed to everything and like i don't know it really helps keep you your mind occupied although i have a few more complaints to make and it may sound like i didn't like it if this is anything to note i when reading this, I was starting to fall asleep reading the uh, last issue I was reading. I think it was Captain America King Black. And then when I started reading this afterwards, I couldn't go to sleep because I was hyped up after I was done reading this. So even though I have quite a bit of complaints, um, it, overall, it's still solid enough. The, the bedrock of it is solid enough to make it worth reading and worth getting excited for what's to come. But uh, this uh, I thought was really cool here where it's um, it's so powerful, it's distorting the artwork. <laughs> Um, that, that was cool. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that before where it's like, it's like the camera, so to speak, is blurred. Um, I don't know. I thought that was cool anyways. And it hops between present and the past. And that's a little weird too. That makes it even, I don't want to say even more confusing to understand because like I I was able to understand it, but it was, you really got to, when you're reading this, you got to not be asleep. Or if you're going to be asleep, you're probably going to wake up after reading this because it's very engaging, um, but sometimes it feels a little too much. I wouldn't say in terms of the hopping back and forth thing, the um, irregular storytelling structure, but I'd say the um, the dialogue was a bit much. And here's another example here where he, um, he's talking about um, he's fighting with the baddies and making jokes and such. But then he says, wait, is this literally a beyond trademark oh, katana? And the katana has a uh, like a... Uh, insignia on it brand insignia on it stuff like that's a little weird but then you'll get just in just a few pages here here you'll see that he reacts in emojis <laughs> um right here you can see it uh, looks like it but then right yeah right over here um as you can see right up here just that that like took me out of it <laughs> because uh that the story's not too complicated i don't know if i exactly want to spoil it but um this this i'm i'm more hesitant about really wanting to spoil but uh spider-man is uh he's doing his normal thing and he gets a call that his friend has um needs his help and that she's taken some drug and there's this new new designer drug that's spreading throughout the city uh called a plus i think it's what it's called a plus and um deadly drug that college students use um helps their performance all that kind of stuff like i guess like adderall but like mixed with something else i don't know um <laughs> and it, it's it, she takes it she's not supposed to spider-man's disappointed in her that kind of stuff and it's that's basically the the gist of it there's also those um villains before that are some part of some kind of like um gorilla um like arms group of some kind i don't exactly know and it's not really fully explained you're just kind of you're you're introduced to a, a drug that's spreading throughout the city you're introduced to spider-man and uh his friend and 
the the drug bad guy group. That's it. Yeah. So um, th there's not a lot going on, but in a way there is a lot going on because of the way in which they handle everything. Those like three elements they they handle in such a way where it's both exciting, it's nonstop. Um, but in, in another way, it's like I said, in certain ways, it's too much certain ways. It's fine. Um, what's interesting though, is that you also get something after this that is, I, I'm more problematic on and you, it's introducing some more kind of elements that we don't exactly know what they're going to, how they're all going to come together. But, um, it's talking about Hydra and a, oh, the, this modern Hydra organization and you see Baron, Baron Zima here and that's cool and all. And the, the whole engagement is cool he's talking about um what he he's he basically wants to take over hydra for himself and wants to be the leader so to speak and that's all fine but what's not is one thing people people have made jokes the second this issue came out before i even read it i heard people complaining about this um and i i'm sorry but i feel the same way baron zima is not a quippy character he's spinning around like once again like he's spider-man he slices a guy shoots another guy Baron Zima is not like that. Baron Zima doesn't say Nazi please. He doesn't all the quips he makes and the fast talking works for Spider-Man although I found it annoying. But this was even more annoying even though it's the same and that's just because it's it's they're talking about we're dealing now with a character that's a you know a Nazi uh that you know is ha has weird uh from what my understanding from what I've read um, I haven't read a ton, but from um, like the 300, mid 300 issues of uh, Captain America that he's after his father's death, he kind of went um, over the edge, so to speak. And he, he's he's more tactical thinking. He, he's more tactical and um, um, intelligent and closed off than being a loud mouthed kind of nuisance. And that, that works for Spider-Man. That's not supposed to be an insult. Spider-Man isn't a nuisance, so to speak, because he's a good guy. But if he was bad, I mean, you could say that. But he's he's a teenager, and he's naive. And that's not Baron Zima. And they're both good for what they are, right? Uh, it, one thing works for Spider-Man, one thing works for Baron Zima. And what works for one doesn't always work for the other. And in this case, they shouldn't have portrayed um, Zima like this at all. He's... He's too loud mouthed. He doesn't sound at all like who he's supposed to be. It, it's just weird. Um, towards the end, that they talk about how Hydra isn't about money, Hydra, and about how Hydra is about as he, as you see up here, the elimination of the weak. And I, I really like that. But it's that was like the you know the little few sprinkles on top of an otherwise these these pages not the whole whole issue but these pages this whole thing was you know the crap sunday and that was just the sprinkles on top that was you know a little bit of salt on my um you know burnt up steak it wasn't uh, this this just isn't how it, it feels it more it's more than just bad it kind of feels disrespectful to the legacy of captain america's rogues gallery and his kind of villains so to speak and it, it's weird. It's cool that they're throwing it in with Spider-Man. It doesn't really seem to fit off the bat, but that they're probably going to tie it together somehow, right? It's gonna once I see how it's tied together, I'll I'll like how it's done. But I, I'm kind of starting to dread it because I'm starting to feel like they might not tie it together, right? They might just be throwing it in just because um, I don't know that they want to uh, try and hype up the show that's coming out. Um, what is it? Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They want to hype up oh, a new era of Hydra or something. I don't exactly know what their motive would be. If they really think that this is going to be cool, because it could be cool, then they really need to fix their writing and they need to figure out how to write Spider-Man. They need to write this differently than they write Spider-Man. And it doesn't seem like they're doing that. But yeah, overall though, as as I stated, I've complained a lot, but there's something there's something to it. It's it's weird. It's uh, I guess um, the sometimes you have to if you're confused. Uh, sometimes I'm confused as to how I can really what I should really say and how I really feel on certain things because there's like the good and the bad, and there's a lot of good and a lot of bad in this issue. But sometimes you have to just sit back and think. Did I enjoy it or did I not enjoy it? And I enjoyed it. If it was a yes or no question, thumbs up or thumbs down, it was a thumbs up. I enjoyed it. But it's – and there's some – but there's some things I'm worried about. There's also a lot of promise though.
Daredevil issue 28 is, I haven't read this yet, I'll be covering this soon, but um, this takes place, and all the Noel stuff is over, and this is uh, Daredevil still in prison, Matt Murdock, and Elektra has, is still taking up the mantle of Daredevil, and seemingly there's something tying to Typhoid Mary and the Kingpin's relationship with her. Uh, spoilers for the last few issues from this. I, that's the thing. It's because it's like it's hard to really talk about what's going. Like I haven't even read this, but again, it's hard to talk about what's going on without kind of telling you, or or it's hard to tell you anything about this issue, even if I even though I haven't read it, without telling you what I know, which is everything before this. So you know. Um, but yeah, light spoilers. I guess I should say after Kingpin had to kind of, after his city was basically taken from him by the owl and his, um, his whole kind of empire crumbled, he's, he's basically, basically recruited Typhoid Mary to be one of his kind of underlings to help him, um, regain his city basically and get back on his feet. And there hasn't really been a lot going on with him the last like three or four issues, but, um, basically, you know, he's trying to survive. He was trying to survive Noel's onslaught, all this, uh, symbiotes and so forth and all that. And, and Matt Murdock is still in prison, which is interesting because this is about a five or 10 second brief spoiler here for, um, is it, I mean, it's kind of, kind of, you kind of would know if you, you know, you've read a f even just a handful of comics or you've seen a few comic book movies, you kind of know that real bad stuff never really happens to the heroes. Unless we're talking Watchmen, you're not going to, the characters aren't going to die. They're not going to, you know, you know, have their, yeah, Batman, if he broke his back, right, he's not going to, his back is going to stay broken. Uh, Spider-Man's not going to stay a clone forever, all that kind of stuff. I'm quoting actual story arcs and comics here. But um, in issue 27, it seemed as if Matt Murdock was going to break out of prison because he had to get out of his cell to help fight um, the symbiotes that were overtaking the prison. But he's back in prison. So I guess he never got out, or maybe he did. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think I've actually read that. I just, I just said just like 30 seconds ago that, um, was it the only thing I know is the everything before this, but I guess I didn't, I don't think I've actually, yeah, I don't, have I read 27? I don't think I've covered it here. Jeez. I got to read that. Yeah. I'll, I'll cover that. I'll, I'll have to check back on that. Jeez. And then I'll, I'll tell you guys what I've been thinking, but so if, yeah. Uh, but it seems as if Matt Murdock does find, um, oh, yeah, is Kingpin in prison with him? Did he go somewhere else? They're all in prison? I don't know. I'll have to read it and tell you what I think and tell you what, what what's going on, man. Cover's cool. And that's it. That's all of them. Wow. A lot of issues. You got all those issues that I showed last uh, last pulls and pickups. Like th these two pickups are the biggest pulls and pickups I've done besides like the tick, I guess, is the biggest. But this was the most difficult because like, or yeah, the, the, I, I, I talked the most about things because for the tick uh issue for the tick issues i hadn't read any of them so there was, wasn't a lot to talk about but you know i i've read a lot of these here and i had quite a bit to, bit to say as you can tell and the last issue the last pulls and pickups which you should check out i had a lot to say i read like all of those right i had like five different issues or whatever that i talked about all of which i've read i think so yeah that was a lot this was a lot i thank you all very much for watching for supporting me you know uh giving thumbs up commenting downvoting all that stuff i all appreciate um but if you're going to downvote or you're going to upvote the main thing i want is feedback so tell me in the comments below what you think More, uh you know just you you can have a friendly talk, right? Tell me what you think of, hopefully it's all friendly, but you, you get my point, right? You can, you can talk about nonstop Spider-Man. Tell me if you've read that, what you've been thinking. You want to read the swamp thing. Uh, what do you think? What's the best Wonder Woman comic you've read? Uh, what do you think of, uh, Baron Zima's portrayal in nonstop Spider-Man and the introduction of Hydra, all that kind of stuff, or just tell me what you thought of the video and what I can improve on or, uh, what you like so I can do it in the future. I appreciate you all very much for watching. I really do. I'm just some guy on the internet. I don't know what I'm doing, but you know, hopefully I'll get better and, um, I'll hope to see you again soon. Aloha.